lovely, cool, and pop. If you're into brikatsu, you're probably familiar with these terms, but what are these types anyway? From a game standpoint, they're simply attributes to separate fashion into, but through the anime, we come to see how these archetypes help create the characters. The lovely slash cute type is generally girly and is associated with the color pink. The subcultures include Sweet Lolita, Tyrolean fashion, and general princess aesthetics from Europe. Common accessories and fabrics include lace, ribbon, flowers, and frills. A lot of these cords come in peach, pink, and other pastels. Angelly Sugar, Silky Heart, and Classical Ange lean pretty heavy on the graceful and lacy aesthetic with lighter colors, while Twinkle Ribbon and Sweet Honey are more generic color and accessory wise. Sugar Melody brings in a music motif, while Marionette Moo adds silver metallic elements, which are more common in cool chords. While unconfirmed, Lovely Melody would definitely fit here with its floral and balloon accessories. Additionally, Fairy Type and Cafe Dressia would probably fit in here too. The Tyrolean brands, Cocoa Flower, Humming Leaf, and Aurora Fantasy in Season 2, all explore the same subculture with similar colors, busts, and skirts showing just how much variety exists. Berry Parfait is the only one to feature such explicit sweet theming. These motifs are usually reserved for pop brands, however with the abundance of check, heart motifs, and lace, it's clearly still a lovely brand. Some of my favorite brands of this type are My Little Heart, Sugar Melody, Twinkle Ribbon, and Marionette Moo. Now what about lovely characters? Off in the mains, lovely types are kind, feminine, and sometimes graceful. These traits are shown through Ichigo, Sakura, and Maria, who embody them pretty well. They're also rather feminine girls with long hair and a dainty or graceful pose. Some of the best examples include Kamishiro Karen or Momoyama Mirai. Looking at Triangle, we see how simply slapping pink on a character communicates the type. For examples of variation, we see that Sakura has shorter hair that's still pink, while Yuma has girlish pigtails. Falulu's hair is probably the wildest, but even she started up and wound up fancy hair. Common traits include airheadedness, clumsiness, a lot for sweets, and a lot for fashion. Aina and Mirai are great examples of kindness, with them reaching out to friends like Daya, and Aina helping Micah to the audition despite just meeting her. For airheadedness, look no further than Manaka Lala and Hoshimiya Ichigo. Yuma's got a love for sweets and a big appetite, while Aida probably loves her clothes the most. Their voices are generally chipper and the songs include ballads and cheerful J-pop. These singing expectations are what left me surprised to hear Matsuri's strong belt. Maria and Madoka's voices are calm, while Ichigo and Yume are more energetic. That's your general idea of a lovely type idol, what they look like, what they wear, and what their music usually sounds like. Full of energy, our next type is pop. Pop is a bright type associated with blue in the Pretty series and yellow in Aikatsu. Common aesthetics include beachwear, cheerleading, clown lolita, sporty clothing, and a more nebulous style found in Vivid Kiss. Common colors include yellow, but anything with high contrast would probably work. Fortune Party and Girls Yell are cheerleader themed, while Neon Drop and Colorful Shake are sporty. Milky Joker combines candy with clown aesthetics which it shares with Magical Toy. Now on to Vivid Kiss and Shiny Smile. These two have a lot vaguer aesthetics with some beachy chords and a few casual ones that fit into the generic western pop style. I can't really place my finger on this style so we'll just leave it at that. Fua Fua Dream uses soft pastels which it shares with Mecha Panic combined with a monster aesthetic. Lastly, Milky Rainbow and Happy Rainbow make use of bright rainbow colors. I think pop courts have the biggest chance of looking campy because of the bright and childish themes, leading to some really questionable outfits. Bottom line is, these courts should look fun and bright. There's a higher abundance of shorts here, which suits the more active energy the type is giving off. Characters of this type can be either annoying or really fun. Fans tend to find their childish nature aggravating, but I think it's pretty entertaining most times. Pop types can be really cutesy, gimmicky, or even competitive. Dorothy, Mire, and Emo come to mind as stubbornly competitive characters who contribute most to the show's comedy. 
Miriki and Dorothy have it even better with a persona hiding their more aggressive and controlling tendencies. Kirara and Otome are meant to be cute first and foremost, so there's not too much depth. I will admit there's a lot more to these girls, but I'm just not bringing them up again. Characters like Kaede and Kokone can come off as one note, primarily because their gimmicks are the basis for most scenes. However, Ajimi is a great example of a gimmicky pop type, as her artistic endeavors never get old. She's full of chaotic energy and always livens up a scene. Hinaki from Aikatsu is a little out of place since her main pop element is eccentricity. She's rather creative with her bold fashion choices, but overall has a pretty tame personality. Daya from Prechan isn't that lively either, but she's cheerful enough to fit into this type. In Prechan, there's an argument to be made about Mel not being given the pop type, given her glittery kiyatu cord and loud excitable personality. Prechan was really stingy with good typings as you'll notice, I didn't mention Anna in the lovely category. We'll talk about the celebrity type later. Pop type songs are loud, energetic, and prone to repetitive background noise. The voices are always loud and playful, bursting with energy. Now the cool type has a pretty broad range of fashion. It's represented by the color blue in Aikatsu and purple in the Pretty series. Common subcultures and aesthetics include futurism, cyberpunk, gothic lolita, rock, street, electro, and mod fashion. That's a lot. It's not even complete, but these are the most consistent fashion styles featured under this type. The goth archetype always falls under cool. There's all kinds of themes from vampires and lolly gothic to the moon and luna witch and moon maiden. Gothic Victoria takes Victorian inspiration and combines it with bird motifs. Secret Alice and Holic Trick use contrasting stripes to create stylish designs. Radiant Abyss has regal flair, while Holic Trick Classic and Love Devi lean more on the occult side. Apart from the gods, we've also got electro and street fashion. This is best represented by Dance Fusion and Dance and Street. Given the wide array of fashion, I feel these brands have a lot of potential. I hope we get more street brands in the future. Rock fashion is covered by Spice Chord, Swing Rock, and Romance Beat. Spice Chord uses chains, bells, and studs, as well as British aesthetics to create its image. Swing Rock does use the British aesthetics too, but relies more on harsh contrast in its colors. Romance Beat is fine. Another aesthetic is Futurism, which Future and Girl covers well. Space and technology motifs appear across its chords. The final and probably vaguest subculture is Mod Fashion. It's a little unclear, and Material Color is the only brand that uses this subculture. It's got contrasting lines, aesthetics, and mosaics to create really artsy designs. It's one of those things you can recognize because of how the lines usually interact, but it's still a bit hard to grasp, so we'll move on to the personalities. Cool types are calm, level-headed, or smart. They're all some form of cool with effortless confidence and a good head on their shoulders. Given how varied the personalities are, I won't go into too much detail. One trend I will note is that tomboys and masculine girls usually fit into this category. There's a lot more leeway for pants, deeper voices, and more masculine representation. The songs are usually techno or rock, and vocally these girls have some pretty deep voices. Great examples being Shion, Suzu, Beikizaki, and Ito. So the first three types have pretty clean overlap in both series, but this last one is a lot vaguer. While natural type fits neatly into lovely, celebrity and style both have all kinds of overlaps, so we'll cover them together. In Aikatsu, style types are generally mature and are usually models. This type is basically an older sister archetype who is stylish and wears grown-up clothes. While lovely types embrace girlish, princessy aesthetics, style types are usually more extravagant and shiny. It's for this reason that I feel celebrity types fit here too. Some common aesthetics and subcultures include gyaru fashion and royal aesthetics with lots of butterfly, flame, rose, and jewel motifs. Additionally, there's also the inclusion of more cultural outfits such as East Asian and Spanish outfits. For royal inspired clothing, we've got Love Moonrise and Perfect Queen. They've both got lots of crowns and flair with blue and red respectively. Brilliant Prince and Eternal Revue are more masculine, with the same gold accents and crowns we'd expect. Sakuraido Kaden and Silky Ocean 
feature traditional East Asian fashion, as does Romance Kiss in one part. I love the unique patterns we get to see. For Gyaru fashion, look no further than Dolly Devil. The bright glittery cords fit perfectly. While I'm not sure it fits, Spicy Ageha does have some Gyaru outfits as well. Dancing Mirage takes inspiration from Showgirls with its red, gold, and purple color scheme. It uses butterflies much like Spicy Ageha but still manages to stand out. Back to other cultures, Sangria Rosa uses rose motifs with Spanish-inspired clothing, while Bohemian Sky draws a lot from different cultures. Overall, Bohemian Sky has the most unique cords in the franchise. It's a real shame such diversity is only found in one type. As mentioned before, they're generally mature whether it's being responsible or more talented. They're basically the ideal of a put-together grown woman. They act as a figure for the young girls to look up to, the kind of person the young audiences imagine they'll be at that age. Well, these girls have long flowing hair, pretty makeup, and wear stylish adult clothes. Ran and Yozura are cool beauties who model, while Mizuki is so glorious she's untouchable. She's a top idol full of stamina and offers sagely advice to guide the girls. Judy and Hibiki exhibit the passion this type has, while Elsa really takes the cake with ambition. Given the contrast between Given the contrast between this type and lovely type, I can see why they're a popular type for the top idol. I might go into this later. This type has been subject to controversy based on its name and how much skin some outfits show, and I think this is pretty valid. There's a few outfits that are definitely uncomfortable to look at, but overall, I do think that it's not the worst in Aikatsu. However, it's a good thing that the Pretty series abandoned this type instead incorporating its aesthetics into cool and celebrity. So one trend in style music, at least to me, is that it's really catchy. It seems like they use lots of catchy club beats because Move On Now, Trap of Love, and Adult Mode are so addictive. Lucky Train and Passion Flower are great too, as are later songs such as Girls Be Ambitious. They all have a strong, catchy beat at the basis with lyrics about flirting and, you know, trying to act grown up, this definitely has contributed to some of the controversy, so it makes a lot of sense to me. Celeb personalities are a little different, and probably my favorite one. Celebrity types have immense talent only rivaled by their pride. They constantly look down on others providing entertainment along the way. Their personalities are pretty simple, so I don't think we'll dwell here long. Before we cover the last type, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of retro fashion across both lovely and pop brands. It makes an appearance in Retro Clover, Very Parfait, and Antique Sailor. I do think its bright patterns and colors fit the pop type, but it's not really a big deal. Ethnic fashion is also featured in Prekatsu, but it's rather sparse, so we'll skip that. So our final type is Premium and Star. This is often reserved for the top idol in the Pretty series, using white or shiny clothing to denote their special status. They've got really nice looking clothes, whether it's Julie's Cord or Ange's Stark White brand. It's always pretty to look at, and it looks great lit up. So that's a comprehensive breakdown of all the types, but why does that matter? Well, as explained, they're archetypes. With so many characters and chords, they need to stand out. These types form the structure for most characters and dynamics, and we're going to look at how the Pretty series has adapted. We already covered how types affect Aikatsu and their identity in my Identity Crisis video, so we're gonna stick to the other franchise. Rainbow Live had seven characters and set the precedent for that number. The girls embody their types in clean-cut ways and use the appropriate colors. If you'd like to see my thoughts on each design, be sure to check out my Design Diary video. The seven types finally got to shine just before they were asked. Prepara leaned in even harder with the main three types and did its best to explore them further. Pop types got much louder and brasher, which is clear when comparing Fukuhara Ann to Minami Mire. Even Yu Serizawa's performance shows a clear difference. Monica Lala foregoes the pink color and opts for bright purple twin tails. As the only lovely type, she stands out even more, as Follow Lose a Robot, thus a pretty good contrast. Dorothy and Leona are pop twins, and managed to be different from Mire. Despite Dorothy being another loud, competitive girl, she's a lot more immature and selfish than Mire. Their personalities are similar, but different enough to keep them distinct. As a cast, they're pretty solid and give us a good impression of the types. 
color-wise, there's also good variety. So Season 2 brought in 5 new characters for each type. I love this decision. Rather than using the new types immediately, the Season 1 characters refamiliarize us with the main three before we meet the new natural and celebrity. But first, Aromageddon. I think Mikan leaning into her occult gothic persona makes her pretty unique among the cast. When paired with Mikan, an innocent child, something really smart happens. Lovely types are pure-hearted, and having Mikan paired with Aroma, a literal devil, really solidifies that. Ajimi takes the pop-type energy to its limit. She's got the most boundless, chaotic lines and scenes far above Mirei and Dorothy. She's loud, untamable, and chaotic. It's fun to see how they played with the building blocks for the main three types, just to go all out in this season. The three new characters are basically the most extreme versions of lovely, cool, and pop. Fuari and Hibiki carry the weight of introducing new types, and I'd say they do it pretty well. Fuari is absolutely obsessed with nature. She lives in the Alps, she plays with goats, she walks out barefoot. She's basically a Disney princess. Once you've met her, it's impossible to miss the point of natural types. Hibiki brings us the celebrity type, and she's pretty good too. Wealthy, arrogant, and completely selfish, she embodies this type to a T. Overall, Fuori and Hibiki are a great introduction and show us what we should expect from the two new types. Season 3 gives us Triangle. Now that we've pushed the types to their limits, let's boil them down to their most basic attributes. Kanon is sweet and pink, Pinon is energetic and yellow, Junon says cryptic things and is purple. These three girls are the three main types boiled down to their essentials. Now about Pepper and Chidi, I've spoken more on Pepper in my Design Diary video, as well as the designs of the other characters, so we're gonna leave her out. Chidi and Shuka are far more interesting to me. Each of them leans into one aspect of the celebrity type. Chidi looks down on others so much she can't team up with anyone, while Shuka is obsessed with money and extravagance. I think the celebrity trio is great, and it really fleshes out the type in a way the natural type just didn't get. Pre-chan went back to basics in a lot of ways. The girls are all color-coded, and because it's in the real world, the hair is a lot simpler. Even the hair strands feel a bit lazy, especially in Mirai's design. She doesn't stand out as a main character at all. Her strongest trait is kindness, which is fine, but Sweet Honey doesn't have a strong enough motif to make her look unique. Twinkle Ribbon had the ribbons and Silky Heart had angels, but this brand hops around in themes so it's not too consistent. I talk about this a little more in my pre-chan fashion devolution video. Now as far as typing goes, I don't like this series at all. They practically force the main types onto every single character. Miracle Kidats have reasonable typings but Meltic Star? Anna's over-the-top antics and enormous wealth deserves the celebrity type. She's over the top, she's condescending, why is she lovely? What was the point? She's not even pure-hearted. She's certainly feminine, but that's it. Mel is even worse. She's constantly talking and full of energy, kind of like Hajime, yet she gets the cool type. It's really bizarre for a character like this to be considered cool, but I guess they didn't want to use any of the cool types. We don't even get celebrity and natural till season 3. Eve's personality fits comfortably into cool, and I guess Alice is natural, but I didn't really care for season 3. The types weren't taken too seriously, but much like Pripara, season 2 was used to emphasize them, with Maria and Suzu showing the contrast between cute girls and cool girls. I thought it was a really unique arc for Suzu to go in, but I think at this point they realized they weren't handling it too well. Watcha Primagi doesn't use types explicitly, but we can still infer them. As far as archetypes go, this is probably the most unique cast so far. Matsuri's got big red hair, which is a bold and strong color, plus she's pretty responsible and tall, which is a unique trait. Hina's bright colors and athleticism could make her pop, and if so, it's neat to have a lovely pop rivalry. Miruki is a unique pop type, taking traits we've seen before and working them into the best character of the season. Amane would probably be celebrity type, and Aru is probably cool. If they go the Pipara route, season 2 will probably give us 5 new characters for each type, but the series is leaning away from types and succeeding at it. A lot of the ideas feel new and risky. I can only wonder if they really need to use types explicitly from now on. 
So overall, I think the Pretty series has done a lot better at straying from types than Aikatsu did, but I do think the types still play a vital role in these franchises and would love to see them updated or return explicitly in the case of the Pretty series. Aikatsu definitely faltered with attributes, but given its impending demise, I don't think it's I don't think there's any time left to save it, so we're just gonna ignore that. With that said, thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time.